Did you know that if you make a plan for your growing space, you can make it so much more productive? And that's exactly what I've done for 2024. I've been out, I've been plotting, I've been planning. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you through the process that I've been through to get my plan together. And you might just get some top tips from me for things that you can take away and do yourself. So first things first, perfect time of year to do it. It's January. It's been the big freeze, the ground is rock solid, it's been raining, it's wet, it's miserable. Get out there and do these sorts of jobs. Measure up, come back, do all the planning and the comfort of your own home with a nice cuppa in the heat and on. And I'll come to all these little bits and pieces here, what's drawn on the bits of paper, why I've done them, why I've got multiple bits of paper, graph paper, all sorts of different stuff down here in a little bit later on in the video because that's kind of the master plan that's going on there. So. What did I do? First things first, I got some bits and pieces together. Nothing complicated, nothing expensive. I got the trusty tape measure. I got a Sharpie. I got some paper. And I got my favourite, I kid you not, my favourite pencil, the Rotring 500, and my little sight notes notebook. And these two pretty much go everywhere with me. And they are absolutely invaluable. So off I jolly well went in the car up to the allotment. And I had a look about, for context, I've got around about 200 square metres of grown space up there. There's a mix of traditional dug beds, there's mature beds, there's raised beds made out of wood, there's ones made out of pallet collars, there's ones made out of metal, and there's the piece de resistance, my favourite polytunnel that I absolutely love. And I had a bit of a walk around, I took a few steps back and sort of took it all in and had a little bit of think of about a few things that I, that I had to think about planning out where they were. Where was the, where were some of the important things? Where's the, where's the shed? Whereabouts is the water supply? Whereabouts can I get deliveries made? Where can I get the car to? All that sort of practical kind of stuff. And then from there, everything sort of plans out around and about from where those sort of fixed points are. Then, after that, I had another little bit of a think about last year. What was successful last year? What, you know, a bit of a, bit of a review. What did really well? What, what problems did I have? What diseases were there? What pests were there? Is there anything in any of the particular beds that might cause me some sort of problem? So, for example, in one bed, if there was club root, I wouldn't use that bed for something like brassicas again. I'd do something else in that bed this year. If I had something like carrot root fly, Again, I'd probably change where I grew the carrots from because, you know, you might think you've eradicated carrot root fly, but there might just be some little larvae hiding in that soil over the winter there that you don't want to cause that problem again. So the next thing I like to think about is paths. And I'm, I'm very particular about my paths. So all my paths at the allotment, are they've got weed membrane down and I use fresh wood chip on top. Now, a couple of things to mention. One, not all weed membrane is equal. If you are gonna use weed membrane, please buy good quality, reasonably thick plastic weed membrane because the cheap stuff just rots away and it's absolutely rubbish. Within months, it'll be destroyed, it'll be rotten away, there'll be weeds coming up, there'll be all sorts of stuff going on. Please, please, please buy decent stuff and use that. And on top of that, I use natural wood chips. So I'm very, very lucky that this local tree surgeon comes in puts wood chips down at the allotments over there and just go and scoop them all up, bring them over and build paths out of them. And it might sound a bit odd, but I harvest my paths. So after, after a year, after about 18 months of walking on all these wood chips back and forward, back and forward, they rot down into some of the most beautiful compost you can get. It's absolutely wonderful. And the other thing, the one other thing that I must mention about paths, well, two other things. Actually, I mentioned before about right at the very start, thinking about where some of those structures are. And for, for me, the allotment, one of the key things is I have a big, long, straight, central path, and then everything sort of comes off that side to side. And that gives me, I've got the water just outside the gate at the end, I've got the shed, I've got this big, long path right down to the polytunnels, I've got the main structures, the main areas, all linked up by this central path. This, the paths are all a particular width. They are wide enough, to get a wheelbarrow down. So don't think I'll build massive beds and have tiny paths. You need to have a decent sized path. So not only can you get yourself down, you can get your wheelbarrow down. So if you've got wheelbarrows full of wood chips, full of compost, 
full of whatever you've got in it. You need to be able to get it to your bed. And once I am back home with that plan, it's time to get the neat work done. So imagine you're at school, you've done your rough work and your neat work, and here is my neat work. So this is A3 graph paper. And the great thing about this is, there's all the little boxes and all the little lines let you draw out your plot or your growing space, whatever it is you've got to scale. So you can accurately draw out on your plan where different things are and exactly what size they are. So you can see here, I've got my paths all colored in brown. I must have had a moment to myself when I decided to color the paths in. But the other clever thing I have done, so for each of the different beds I've got, these are just little bits of the top of sticky post-it notes that I've cut off and I'll write what I'm growing in those beds at that time. And the great thing about that is you can just switch them about and put stuff in different beds. If you get new crops, new varieties, new things, just write a new, new little sticky bit and you can pop it in there and have it on your plan as well. So some other things to think about. Once I have got this drawn out, dig or no dig, that is the question. Now I've got a mixture, I said before, I've got a mixture. Some beds are traditional beds that have been dug up and dug over and get dug over every year. The vast majority of my plot though is raised beds, no dig sort of technique. And this is where my rant comes in. I've, I've, I'm, I'm thinking about putting in another two raised beds and I'm a big fan of using pallet collars. And I thought, you know, I just, I like to shop about, I like to have a look about, see what's in the market and stuff like that. And the price of pallet collars, admittedly, are sort of creeping up. I probably put my main sort of source of pallet collars on the allotment, maybe it's about two or three years ago. And they were pretty cheap. Sometimes you pick them up from free, from different businesses, local companies, stuff like that. Sometimes people sell them on the likes of Facebook Marketplace for a couple of quid. I mean, you're talking three, four, five quid at the most. But I think people have got wise to this. And if you look on Facebook Marketplace, I was looking there last night, nine quid was the cheapest one I could see. Even worse, this is where the rant comes in, B&Q, I kid you not, B&Q are selling raised beds on their website and it's a pallet collar and they are charging 26 pounds. 26 pounds, well, pl plus delivery on top of that for a pallet collar. What an absolute rip off. So save yourself some money, folks. Get yourself, ch chat to local businesses, get on Facebook Marketplace, see what's out there if you want to use pallet collar raised beds. Anyway, once, once you've decided, sorry about the rant, once you've decided whether you've got dig or no dig, decide on your plan which beds are going to go where and what's going to grow best in each of them. And once you've got all that done, you might end up with something that looks a little bit like the same sort of plan that I've got. Most, most allotments you see end up in this sort, of, this sort of system with the central path, bits coming off either side, a grid system. It almost looks like you've ever seen New York from above. It looks just like one big sort of grid system. And that's, it, it's good. It's not, it's maybe it's not the most creative, but it's very practical. It's very easy for getting things around and about, getting to the beds, bringing stuff in, bringing stuff out. Makes life just a little bit easier. So now that we've gone to the trouble of doing all this drawing and labeling and planning and plotting, I guess we actually have to have a think about what we're actually going to grow in this space. And for the first time ever, I've caved in and I have made myself a spreadsheet. I've got a big long spreadsheet of all the seeds I'm going to be sowing this year. And it's just, I needed to do it. I think, I think last year I got caught out a little bit by not being planned as well as I should have been. I was always very ad hoc. I was very, what should I do now? What should I do? What should I do now? But now I have a plan. And it's, it's amazing how quickly the spreadsheet is getting more and more complicated. So all the different seeds, when I'm gonna sow them, what I'm also trying to build into it now is an estimate of when they're gonna be harvested and what's going to succeed them in that bed. So throughout the year, different things will be ready at different times. You take them out of the bed, you want to have a ready-made replacement to go in that bed and fill that gap. Now I would say around about 90% of my beds are pretty much set in stone what's gonna be in there and when, but I like to leave a little bit of free space. I like to leave a couple of beds and I would really, really recommend you do this. Leave a couple of spare beds. And for me, there's two reasons for that. One is to experiment. I like to experiment. I like to get new varieties or new crops or new things and just try them out. 
just a bit of space, just something to have a bit of fun with, a bit of an experiment and see what happens. And the other thing, the other, the other bit is, people always give me stuff. There's always something. I'll go to a, I'll go to a plant swap or one of my allotment neighbours will come along and say, oh, here's some plants. Do you want some, some of these plants? And I feel awful. I feel awful saying no. I can't, I can't say no to things. I'm terrible for that. So I'll always say yes and I'll take them and I want to have a nice, a good space to put them in and grow them on and of course show them what I've done. And another thing to consider when picking your seeds that you're going to sow this season is pick things that you're actually going to use, that you're actually going to eat. So when you grow the crops, what do you like? What do you like to eat? I'm, I, I've made this mistake in the past, don't get me wrong. I've, I've, when I got my allotment, I said, oh, what should I go to? Like, you must grow cabbages. What's really, really quick to go? Radishes. I don't eat a lot of radishes. I don't eat a lot of cabbages. It's not that I don't dislike them. I do like them. It's just I don't eat beds and beds and beds full of this stuff. So have a think about your space and think about what you're going to do. Over the years, I've very much evolved into grow, and, and I grow a lot more onions than I used to. We use loads of onions, and onions keep really, really well. Garlic is another thing. We use a lot of garlic in cooking, and garlic stores really, really well. Plus, I do a thing where you sort of make into little bits and put it in the freezer, and it works absolutely magic. So please have a think about things that you're not just going to grow and turn into compost. And finally, on to the last few things about this planning process. One is once you have it all drawn out, once you think you have your plan finalised, walk away from it. Walk away from it for at least a week. Go away, look at some of those things I mentioned about inspiration before. Have a look on YouTube, go and speak to people, look at other people's plots, come back to it with a fresh set of eyes, do a bit of a review. You can even take your plan after that week and show it to a friend, show it to a plot holder, ask other people, say, oh, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Have a look, have a think about their ideas and what they might have to say about it. And just do a little bit of a review with those fresh eyes. The other thing is, you might notice that this is on paper and I use a pen and a pencil and we're in the digital age. I work on a computer all day, every day. It is very nice, it is very therapeutic to use a piece of paper, a ruler, a pencil and draw something out. If you want to do it digitally, please do. There's tools out there, there's different things out there you can use. My good friend JB from Naturally JB channel, go and check it out for some inspiration. He has got a code that you can use to get a discount to use one of these garden planning systems. I will put a link in the description down below. Please go and have a look if you want to do it digitally. If you have drawn it out like me, once you have your plan, please take a photograph of it. Get your phone out, take a picture, because if it gets wet, if it gets ripped, if it gets lost, if it gets ruined, you have lost it. Plus, if like me, I mean, I'm a good four miles away here from my allotment, once I'm at the allotment, I've generally always got my phone on me. Bring it out, have a look, see how the plan's looking, see where the different things are, and I don't have to worry about taking the paper with me every time. And I guess one last thing to think about it is it will evolve. It'll take time. This doesn't happen overnight. Like I said, this has been three to four years in the making for me to get things how I want it to be. And I'm, I still don't think it's right. You know, my, my allotment, and probably very much the same, as everybody else's grown space out there is it's a bit like painting the fourth bridge you start the job and just when you've finished it and you think you're done you start all over again so i'm going to be tinkering i'm going to be changing especially over the winter i'm i'm dreadful for over the winter going up there changing stuff about putting different beds in different places and changing the configuration which is why i like my little sticky notes because it's dead easy to keep it up to date anyway that is me very much done for today I will see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.